All right, welcome back, everyone. So um, I see a lot of DASO members have left the room, but I actually wanted to thank DASO again for hosting and lunch. So thank you. Um, I see my uh, the combination of my my uh, my statements that it's getting more technical combined with the nice weather outside has uh, indeed cleared the room a bit. <laughs> so uh, ah. Good. So he's still uh, someone who has the courage to uh, to sit through this. <laughs> Good to have you, Frank. It's only be yes, it is. It is going to be. So um, up until the uh, coffee break, we have um, the the part we didn't do before lunch. So uh, update of the implements form. So we have an IFC four dot x implementers form who's meeting every Thursday online. Most of you are joining that. Um, now that we have 4.3 delivered, this implements form is going to change a little bit. Ivandru will update you on that. That's only a couple of minutes. And then we have this functional parts workshop, which is related to the new software certification. But Ivandro will uh, walk you through that quite quickly as well. I guess everyone knows Ivandro, so introductions are not needed. Yes, so so hi everyone again. Thanks. Uh, let's see if we can manage to keep you alive after lunch. Uh, I'll probably do some changes and then provide some context for your part and and do something else uh, later. But just a quick reminder: everything we're going to say, especially in these two upcoming sessions, is very much under the safe harbor st statement. So I think I read it, uh, at it. We will share the slides. So uh, yeah. You'll have my contacts in, in case you need to get in touch. Uh, and at this point, maybe without my face, I'll give you some update on the implementers forum and IFC for the three in general, which I owed you from the previous session. So as I said briefly, the IFC for the three standard has, be, has been resubmitted to HISO, will be officially resubmitted uh, next week on the 7th, but the document's already circulated. Um, as you know, the, the previous standard was approved uh, with uh, 575 comments, 54% uh, of them technical and 30 something editorial. Uh, we did a huge work. I, I have to thank the entire ISO editorial group, uh, one member is in the room, uh, Sergey, but there are more, more people that of course contributed to resolve these almost 600 comments in a very short time. Um, just to give you an update, I don't have nice graphics because the submission was just yesterday, but just to give you a feeling, out of the 575 comments, 61% were documentation. Um, less than 2%, it's a combination of schema and documentation, and the rest, were uh, they were either no actions, just replying to the comment, but no actions on documentations and schema, and the a good part, 25%, were marked as to be resolved in future releases. So they, they were either too big to be resolved in a minor release or out of scope for this release. So there is still some, some work to do for the next uh, phases. Uh, if everything goes uh, according to plan, as said by Leon, uh, we will have something by Christmas. It's uh, the FD's phase is a fixed eight weeks uh, voting period. Uh, and it's only a yes and no. So there are no further reviews requests. Um, beside that, on the implementers forum, I'm going to share a quick slide. So, of course, a big component of dealing with this comment was the uh, they were the vendors involved in the implementers forum. So they heavily contributed to both parts, spotting out mistakes and fixing them in the last month. Um, I just want to share with, with you this link. I'll probably paste it in the chat later. I'm not sure you have it done, so yeah, I'm afraid you can't do it now. But just to inform you that uh, last week, we gathered the forum, which usually happens weekly, uh, and we ask the vendors uh, some questions. So for example, now that the ISO 403 submission is done, would you still like to keep on meeting on a weekly basis? I was hoping for a no, because it takes a lot of effort to organize this on a weekly basis. But the amount of collaboration and the actual value that vendors and implementers see in these type of meetings 
is that I that they, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to do it uh, weekly again. So um, it's not going to be the same because we we don't we are not targeting anymore an ISA submission, but there's still work to do, of course. Uh, MVD implementers agreement working towards certification, um, and so together these topics, together these input. We had an online uh, sticky note session with the uh, vendors. So I'm going to share the link. The board is open. Uh, you will see there are four, three um, main uh, frames that we ask feedback on. Uh, the first one is topic of interest. So would you like, what would you like to discuss next? Which type of challenge are you facing now implementing IFC for the three? Uh, which type of solution would you like to put forward to fellow implementers? And we ask them to be specific. So alignment is not a topic. The second uh, part where we ask uh, feedback on was the questions to users. So this is something that came up straight from vendors. They often have questions to end users. And so what we are doing now with this, and we, um, again, I'm gonna share the link. So I, I hope you will post more sticky notes. We are collecting questions from implementers to the end users. So then we can identify the user base, the right user base to invite into the forums. Again, these forums are vendors only at the moment, but it's good if we can collect some questions for end users, invite them in the forum and having those uh, domain expert uh, explain, further clarify their requirements, their expectations. Um, in front of the vendors. So we're using these piece of the board to collect questions to users. And then another uh, part of the board we're using to collect ideas for future uh, games, BSI games. So for those of you that were in Rome, uh, we organized a game, uh, which was a very nice session, two days session between end users and software vendors trying to simulate the supply chain, exchanging a couple of files, uh, checking an IFC files against an IDS. So we simulate a real case scenario in a, in a four hour exercise um, without judging any tool. So there were really the teams made of end users that had to play and, and put their hands on a keyboard and try to figure out the best way to solve the challenge. Uh, the, the game was a, such a success that we received tons of requests to repeat them. And uh, we asked the vendors feedback and input on uh, if their willingness to join, to keep on uh, participating into these type of events. Uh, here you see the participants of the last uh, session. Uh, again, we might want to repeat this session also to allow people from different time zones to connect and provide their feedback. But yet, uh, um, once again, this board is public. Uh, so when I'll share the link, as soon as I'll be back to the chair, um, you will get the chance to put your own feedback. Just make sure there is an important note here. Make sure to log in to the uh, Miro board so that we can uh, trace back the comment to you if we need to expand or if we need further clarifications. Um, that's it about the forum. If you're not part of the forum yet, uh, it's very easy. It's an open door uh, venue. Just send me an email and I will uh, add you to the mailing list. I will send you the link to the box folder where we collect all the previous meeting recordings and you will have access to the, to the entire material. There is a GitHub repository, which is open. So uh, I will just point you in the right direction and you should be able to walk on your, on your legs. Any questions on this? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good question. The proposal from vendors is actually to identify them in the building smart users base, so in the community of building smart. So they will have questions to users. Questions might be domain specific to rail, to bridge, and then we will go into the building smart community, trying to find the right people that can answer those requirements. That's the idea, again, straight out of the minds of vendors. I'm just uh, repeating the message. I think it's a good idea, by the way. I don't know what you think. So let's see which questions we collect and which with, with which priority, and then uh, let's figure out the best people to to invite into the meetings. Any other questions? Okay. 
So that was the update uh, back on this one. Can I switch to that microphone? Yeah, better. Okay, so this is a two part workshop, two parts workshop. The first one is meant to provide a bit of context to what we, you are going to do next uh, with FAIRT in the certification algorithm discussion. Um, a bit of survey, because I know you did this this morning, but just uh, give me an idea how many vendors again in the room? I mean, how many survived the, the morning? One, good. And how many are SDK provider? I guess only one, right, in the room? Two, yeah, sorry. Three, four, four SDK provider? Okay. Um, and one online, good. Um, just out of curiosity, which IC version does your software implement? Like, let's go by by version. So 2x3. Okay, four. Good, four to three. Yeah. I usually use this trick also to get the blood going after lunch, usually the circulation helps to keep people alive. Okay. Um, in which direction? Import only, import only. Okay, export only. Okay, the rest is both. Okay, got it. Um, that's an interesting one. Uh, how many have previously been involved in BSI software certification? Ah, that's a big drop. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and just out of curiosity, how many have been involved in any other software certification? Hmm, interesting too. Okay. Um, a bit of context on the IFC data validation and IFC certification. So these are four slides that can easily take two hours, depends on your reactions. Um, let me just tell you that the, the gist of the workshop is actually after these four slides. So let's see how much time we need to go through these four slides. Uh, Distinction between the, so first of all, first, uh, those of you that are part of uh, Building Smart, meaning members, will probably have received uh, an email from Clive explaining this concept. I'm just repeating it with a couple of figures, uh, graphics to, to help you understand. So the IFC data validation is uh, a system that allows both end users and implementers to quickly check IFC files against the standard. Um, and the results are presented in functional parts, which is the subject of the workshop. The IFC certification show uh, how well a certain software of a certain version uh, supports uh, IFC using data coming from the IFC uh, data validation. So in a very dumb graphical way, users and vendors submit files of different natures and the data, the metrics that are collected by a significant amount of files, let's discuss which is a significant amount, are then gathered to provide information about specific software of certain versions um, all aggregated. Uh, This is how it's supposed to work. So easy three-step process. Uh, you upload the IFC files to, to the BSI validation service. Uh, the validation service will present the results in a similar fashion with blocks that identify functional parts. And then the uh, a dedicated BSI portal will aggregate these results per vendor, per tool, per version, and will provide the users with uh, yeah, with information about the comprehensive um, nature of the file. So to give you an idea, this is a mock-up, but just to give some graphical meaning to what I'm saying, let's assume I, I'm a user, I'm uploading a certain file, pipe, 4.3, 
I get some metadata about the file size, uh, validation date. But then the main part is that I'm getting an assessment of my file divided per functional part. So features, IFC features, and then I get an evaluation. So whenever uh, I have some materials information and I have them right, so I check materials, those are exported right, I get a green block. Whenever something is in the file and it's wrong, gets a red block. Whenever something is not in the file, because it's not subject to this exchange, it gets a gray block. It's not in scope of the file. So at the moment is as simple as that. The idea is that then the IFC certification basically aggregates, again, this is another mockup, uh, aggregates the results per tool, per version of the tool, uh, gives you information about the latest update and how many files this uh, assessment is based on, and basically gives the same idea. So Magic Beam version 2.3 is aiming to support all these green blocks plus the red blocks, just the red blocks are failing, and the gray blocks are not in scope for that specific tool. So that tool is not interesting in supporting uh, assemblies, IFC assemblies, based on the files that we got. So that's, that's it in terms of context, because the challenge for today is to define the little boxes, so the functional parts. We need to agree on how to present the results. So we need to agree on those little boxes. At the moment, they are a guess, a best guess, but we need to agree on how we're going to present results to users based on these functional parts. Questions? Yep. Uh, right, so you showed you show the different boxes, the, the green and the red. Uh, open question, I guess you said is, how many is statistically significant? Yeah. Uh, and certification is basically once X have been presented and it's green, you're certified. Yeah, that's correct. So that's the subject of the certification algorithm workshop because we need to say, we need to understand, we need to agree uh, what qualifies as statistically significant. So 100, 200, 300 uh, per version, per tool. Uh, what's the percentage? 5%, 10% correct of the whole amount of file. Do we need to be functional part specific? So what happens if we fail three functional parts? Do we get an overall assessment or do we have an assessment per functional parts? based on the number of files. So we need to work on the percentage. We need to work on the um, number of files that the statistics is based on. We need, of course, to tweak the algorithm to exclude, for example, files coming from uh, vendors while implementing the, the, uh, the standard, because uh, they might be wrong. Uh, also, we need to exclude uh, uh, duplicate files. So people that are doing these uh, 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 you know, test approach of uploading multiple files with the same mistake. So we're going to get 10 files with the same error. So the, uh, yeah, the subject of the next session is really to identify and to agree on these rules, how the certification algorithm, that's the name that we gave, but basically what's the business logic of turning a box red and green. So this is very much the first time that we're doing this. That's nothing carved in stone. It's actually very much up to debate. Okay, so final clarifying, that does mean that for certification, we do need to convince our users to do these updates of their files to the certification service. Is that correct? Yes, that's an implication. So okay. the assessment is based on the files that we get from users. Okay. Yes, so users need to upload a statistically significant amount of file before we can say, say something about your tool. Yeah, um, what about the uh, privacy of uh, the IFC file submitted? It's a point that was raised before to me. Like uh, if our customers submit their IFC files, does it mean that they get published or visible? Is there some sort of uh, guarantee on the IP? Good question. This also came up in, in California. <clears throat> uh, 
I think there, I, mean, I don't think, I'm sure there are terms and conditions when you log into the validation service that tells for how long and for which use uh, the files are hosted. Short answer is that the files are not public. So they are hosted by Building Smart and their servers for a certain amount of time. And no one else up, uh, uh, beside the users that upload them can see those files. And then the other question, I guess, is um, someone could uh, submit files on behalf of our company saying, yeah. uh, you know, like this is uh, supposed to be working, but it's not working. Like, is there anything yeah. preventing that? Yeah, that's where that's where we are working on the algorithm. When we need to exclude things, you know, it, 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 this is very much statistical science. So we need to exclude things that are not relevant for the scope. And this is very much one of them. Yeah. I see three, four reasons. Uh, just I'm. I'm can be counted as a user in this side of this conversation. So am I uh, knowledgeable as to what I'm submitting this for? Or I may, I just made a file and I'm just submitting it because my vendor asked me to. As in, I can make a very gross file based on where I, you know, I made the geometry and the tool I used or I imported it or all these other things that can put a, make this challenging. So it's a question of, am I making unit tests or am I, a random person that just uses the software. I understand. What's what's your concern? I think just be based on the way people use our use the software we use, fifty percent of them would fail just because of the way we work. Yeah. So just to clarify, the validation service is not created for software certification. The validation service is created because daily we get use cases where someone tries to use an IFC file. It doesn't work, who's to blame? Is the implementation on import not good? Because then the software vendor says, no, your file is wrong. And then um, someone opens it in, in, a, in a tool with the YAO logo and it says, no, it opens fine. So the file is correct. So um, there's always this discussion on is the file correct or not? Or is the, is the software implementation too strict or not strict enough? Um, so on the request of the vendors, they said Building Smart needs to create an authority that kind of stops this discussion where you can say if a, if a file is valid or not. So that's the reason why this was created. So we have files that are, yeah, people don't just want to know if it's valid before they send it to others or there is an issue with it and they want to know who's to blame. There's even uh, use cases also with handover between a contractor and architect or from one phase to another phase where you want to be absolutely sure that what you hand over is valid. Um, so those are the typical use cases that we see now why users use this. Yes, also vendors use this to do unit tests, but we know who they are. They log in with an email so we can uh, clear those out. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm basically asking because if we're trying to use statistics here, like we have to know is the, uh, am I checking something that I, I already assume I know how it's supposed to work and I'm trying to validate that, which means, oh, yes, this is supposed to be an extrusion and it's supposed to be part of an assembly. That's much different than I have no idea what, I, what my yeah. tool does. Yeah. So I don't even know if this is supposed to be a solid extrusion or, or a triangulated mesh. How would, how would you guys interpret yeah. that? So currently we're just checking if it's a valid IFC file without further restrictions on a use case. So if you have a use case that says it needs to be an extrusion, we're not checking that. This is just checking against the schema. If you wanna do a check against a certain use case, this is not your tool. We need, you need to use a different tool. So functional parts are one of many, not a, like that's the way I should think about it. It's a grouping of, it's a grouping of the elements in the schema, in the specification. Right. It's, okay. a, it's a feature collecting IFC entities. So you might use certain IFC entities altogether to perform a meaningful concept or to exchange a meaningful concept. And the, the functional parts, these IFC features, we can argue the whole day about the definition. And at a certain point, we will probably agree on one and publish it. But the idea is that this is just a way to present results to users. Because, okay. I mean, the first option is 
a big red and green box for the entire file. Like your file is wrong or right. So that's not acceptable. Next, that we need to find a balance between these and saying something more about the file. So the idea was to try to divide the file into the features, the IFC features that this file is targeting on. Is it in scope? Is it not in scope? When it's in scope, is it right or is it wrong? Regardless if the user was trying to achieve that or not. Yeah, so I guess the people that are checking specific things will care what they che they're checking on. The people are just uploading things for something else. This is where the statistics get hard. Is like they they don't care about the thing I'm I'm not looking at. So it it's possibly it's just all wrong, but it could feed into statistics that say it's fine. So this is where that's the other parts I'm fine with. It's just the using other uploads as a va the validation math a process doesn't quite. Yeah, good Except point. Uh, do the vendors get some feedback? If there are some like red boxes, can they like access? Only if they pay the membership. Okay. Yeah. No, we are not exporting, so it's not, it's not our problem. <laughs> no, again, yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's a short answer. Yeah, again, this is not to be the police officer to blame everyone. Yeah, of course, the input here is to also help vendors improve. That's the goal. It's not to to to, cur to color boxes red or green. The, the idea is to, to make sure that implementations are better and improving, yeah. yeah. How about the IP? How about the IP in that, like if somebody sends their darling IFC file there and, and it's only meant for building smart but then you also need to share something to the vendor yeah yeah so on the roadmap we have these um of backlog I should call it actually we have a, a, a kind of a functionality where then a user can give permission to send it to the vendors okay. but it's low on the backlog it could use a sponsor to put it up <laughs> Yeah, my question is, um, so now the validation service is mainly used when things go wrong. Uh, uh, that's when people check the file to know, is it the file or is it the import? Uh, but you kind of want statistics overall. Uh, but uh, how are you, are you going to encourage users to upload all kinds of files, also um, files that they don't experience uh, problems with? Uh, so what is, what is the incentive to just send any file to, to the validation service? So you, you will have a bias in your results. Good, good question. And the second question is uh, like uh, some of the rules that you check uh, also depend on how the user uh, uses or puts data in it. Just like a small example, like uh, in, in property sets, property names need to be uh, unique. But what if a user creates yeah, his own custom properties and they are not unique? That's not a software thing, that's a user thing. How are you going to distinguish between those? Yeah, good question. So I'll go with a second because it's a little bit easier in my point of view. So uh, amongst the feature requests that we got is also one for dealing with good practices. So not something that is either wrong or right, but also good practices like uh, contain the number of proxy elements or when you do create custom P sets, don't create two property sets in the same P set, even if it's a custom one. So if it's a standard one, it's easy to check because it's wrong. We can say it's wrong. It's part of it was it's not part of the standard. But when you do custom things, so this is the scenarios where we might be able to raise flag. Okay, so flag the file as uh, this is not entirely wrong, but something is weird in your file. Okay. And yes, this is a challenge. How we treated this in the statistical part okay because for the user it's solved you we raise the flag but when the flag sums up how do we deal with them in the statistical part the first one is a good question so what's your idea do you have any proposal like i think there's a lot of valuable information that comes out of the validation service and i think uh vendors are definitely interested in knowing like, hey, are there files coming from my software that have problems so I can address them? Like some come uh, to us uh, via the users, but some users don't report those things. So uh, I think they're definitely uh, very useful for improving the quality of our tools. Uh, I have some concerns on using these data 
to show statistics on software because I'm kind of not sure if that really represents what we want to represent. So maybe we have to go, yeah, yeah. discuss one level higher. Like, do we want to represent <laughs> Uh, such kind of data or don't we want to use it in another way like just and maybe ask the user uh, when they upload the file do you want to share the results with the vendor of the tool that created the software yeah that's yeah that's the last bit that's already part of the backlog slash roadmap so we're considering asking users if they're willing to share feedback with vendors but i understand your point so from a statistical point of view you're right if we only get wrong files we can't say anything about a valid file. So we need to incentivize people to upload also valid files. And how to do it, it's very much up to this group. We need to find a strategy to do that. Can I, can I comment on that? Because there's this is clearly software vendors in the room. We're also having these sessions with other people in the room. And there's a lot of like, uh, government organizations, large clients um, that want to be sure that their file is valid. So um there are a lot of use cases where we see that people upload a, va a valid file to be sure that also the building smart validation service says it is valid we also have uh features on the backlog to simulate that like for example when you upload it and it's valid you can download it with a digital signature that says building smart validation service has approved so these are the kind of things like functionalities and features that we're thinking about to also yeah, make sure that people use it to validate their valid files I also had a comment on the other one, but I'll, I'll leave that for the break. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so first I do have a comment on the user creates bad data. It's not our fault. Um, I, I guess I disagree with that. I think, for example, the user creates pset underscore my pset, right? Which is illegal because only official psets can start with pset. Yeah. And we just say, well, that's what the user created. I put it in the file. I think actually that's incorrect, right? If, if the user is trying to do something wrong, it's up to us to not let them. So if they put two property sets of the same name, we can't just blindly, I mean, I understand why we'd want to, that's what they wanted, but that's actually not allowed in IFC. So I think, I think it's correct to mark that as invalid. Yeah, some of these will be normative, like the example that you just gave and some of them, yeah. I, actually, that was also my comment that I didn't want to bring up. There's a lot of voices that have your opinion, and I think we should deal with it here. Yes, uh, I was uh, for, about the, the validation service. I think it's uh, good for uh, vendors to see if their file is valid, but uh, checking in X, XSD will, uh, okay, uh, the, the, the schema uh, at least uh, would check if it's valid, but it will not tell uh, whether it will be a good uh, file for interoperability. If you uh, stick to the schema, you can have many flavors of uh, implementation of IFC, many ways of uh, putting information. And for vendors, if uh, you certify that this file is valid, that means that maybe 10 ways of uh, expressing the same information would have the stamp valid from Building Smart, and we will be obliged to implement and to support those 10 ways of uh, expressing the same information. What I was expecting also for the validation service is to go further, maybe to have some uh, general uh, implementer um, agreement saying, okay, the best way to uh, convey uh, georeferencing information, the best way to uh, uh, share geometry using a representation uh, map and map -ed item is this one. And uh, the validation service will check those uh, uh, agreements and put a flag saying, okay, it's valid. Uh, from the standpoint of the schema, but not from the um, agreements. Yeah. So I was yeah really looking into this to help uh, interoper interoperability. Um, I'm also participating in the step implementer forum, and that's what we put in place also in this case to have a, a twofold uh, validation, saying okay, with uh, we do it with XML step XML, it's valid against XSD, and then we have other rules that we define together. And there is another tool that just checks those rules and say, okay, it's also valid uh, according to our recurrent practices. Yeah, I like it and I agree. Okay. That's, I mean, it's not a chance that the IFC implementers forum is called in that way. I, I was previously involved in the SEP community and yeah, this, the CAX IF and the MBIF. So yes, the principle is that. And I like your, the second part, the 
these are the rules that we agreed mm -hmm. how to do it, how to better implement the exchange of georeferencing information and to put them in the validation service. So what we, what I probably should have said is that at the moment the validation service has few rules, but they need to grow drastically. So we need your input and your consensus and your agreement to say, okay, the schema allows this much of things in terms of exchanging georeferencing information, but let's find a common understanding on the basic, that, 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 that there is a challenge because we need to keep this global. So we cannot make use case specific. I mean, we can, but then we, need, we step into the other, the third block, the use case specific certification. But we're staying within the boundaries of the global part, the more we can agree on the, how to exchange GIS information globally, we make it one, two, three rules, we put it in the validation service and hopefully everyone will implement it in a similar fashion. But that's the idea, yes. Okay. We're not there, we're not there yet. Uh, and yes, still looking for sponsors. So I, I have another question about this statistic, statistical you know, evaluation. Have you considered a survivorship bias where like an, a software might export very good files in 99% of cases and those files that get consumed and you don't get them, they'll upload it. But the 1% that fails for whatever reason gets uploaded so that software render will have a 100% failure rate on the service, right? Yeah. How to account for that? Yes, that's part of the answer that we got before. So yes, we took into, into account the survivor bias um, and one incentive is to gain this signature that people can get on the, on the file. So even when they get good files, they are incentivized to upload them because they're going to get a digital signature. So we're, we need to make sure that we can collect also good files, not only wrong ones, to balance these statistical uh, bias. We do, we, we do know that exists. And one way to solve it is this one. Yes. I'm just checking where Leon is. He's far. So it's going to take him a while to take the microphone from him. So I do have one concern. Well, I have a number of concerns, but <laughs> one valid concern, I think. Um, I know for a fact that many IFC files are uh, modified after they're created by API or yeah. other. Uh, those do not always or even necessarily often change the header when they do that. So there may be a lot of, oh, this fails on this, but actually it wasn't our software, it was some other software. So how do we deal with that case? And I don't, I, I have other, you know, malicious actors, et cetera. Those seem more theoretical, but this one seems more of a practical. No, that's that's, that's very concrete. We saw some files that have been tweaked by hand, also in the header. So not only tweaked in the content, but also in the header, they changed the authoring tool. So <laughs> we're going to get <laughs> bad statistic on the wrong tool. So um, I don't know. It's a valid question. Yeah. I mean, this is a very valid concern, but it can it can be fixed with uh, with CRCs or signed uh, CRCs. So you, when you export a file, you you hard sign it in a comment at the end of the at the end of the file, and then you can you can know whether it was an original Autodesk file or not. Um, it, might, it might take a little bit of work, but it's not impossible to achieve. But um, I think as a SDK provider, you know, I would be very much in favor of, of this because the number of nights I've spent to try and fix, uh, you know, to, to, to comply with the Solibri standard, Solibri reads bloody everything. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it's, it's hard. And so I think there is value in all of that. Survivor bias, well, as an academic, I will push hard for common data environment uh, you know, be managers uh, to 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 embed good practice of verification and and checking models as they are exchanged. Why not? So there are a number of ways to get around that. But still, my concern is that the amount of files that I've seen over the years that are truly bad, it's really low. So. Uh, that might be my, my 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 biased perspective, but but there are a number of files, like a, a, a very large number of files that are in 
where the mistakes or the inconsistencies are really truly difficult to catch, like unsuitable precision levels in uh, in the geometry. Because again, I don't think there are, uh, again, um, I don't think it, it's, the, you know, the number of alphanumeric issues that I've encountered over the years is, is negligible. But then the huge majority of the problems were was, okay, this Boolean uh, or in the geometry returns an empty shape or of some sort or, yeah. or, you know, that kind of thing. That's that. But do you have, you plan to go that far into? Yeah. That's actually where we should start from. Cause as you say, the alphanumerical like part, first of all, some of them is probably is not clear. They are not in scope. So we will not judge if, a, if a property is of the right value. This is, this is not checking the content of course. syntax, a schema and, implementers agreement specification. So whenever something is not clear, we need to document it, add into the documentation, and then refer uh, to a rule into the validation service. So we cannot have something in the validation service that you don't find a correspondence in the documentation. So it's always a, a dual thing. Um, and yes, we should start from exactly those type of rules, the, those difficult ones, actually, the one that prevents software A to read the file from software B. Then I'm in. Good. <laughs> so just a small thing, like uh, how it's going to work for uh, small companies as well. All those restrictions that you mentioned, it account on the BSI side, uh, some checking, some validated users. Uh, so. Uh, finally, uh, we are talking about some big companies and large software vendors. Uh, I mean that, uh, and it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40 companies. And uh, uh, there are a lot of small companies as well who provide some IFC export and for small uh, users base. And uh, I'm not pretty sure that they can be easily validated and uh, trusted with all those criteria that you mentioned it and to get a valid statistic and so on and if we talk just about large software vendors it's we are talking about okay 30 50 companies and it can be done just manually to check them and certify and uh, what about hundreds other small companies uh, and uh, about restrictions for them. Uh, you mean it's just uh, regular? No, no, no. Uh, because you mentioned it that we talk about end users, and in some cases, um, no, no, not in some cases, but those files even not be translated to vendors, based on uh, uh, it, it should be uh, end users should provide rights. To, to translate it to end users, but end users are also small companies and I'm not sure. And uh, are they going to register on, why, why, what's the reason why they are going to register on BSI, create an account and so on and so on. Yeah, I think that also comes back to what we said earlier. There's a, trying to create a lot of incentives for people to upload files. Um, but we're trying to create a lot of incentives for people to upload files and also what we see now in the database. I don't know how many users do we have now that uploaded one or more files? Do you know by heart? Around 200, probably. Yeah. How, how many files they uploaded? Uh, 2,000. Each, each one of them. I mean, some users just 10 files, some user 100 uploads. Okay. And if we take statistics, uh, so some of vendors use the certified based on 10 files. Yeah, that's after the break. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that is exactly the question. Yeah. We, we, I mean, here, to, I'm not sure if you know the numbers by heart, but we extracted the whole database of what we have now. And there's already, how many different products were there? Did you find? I saw 178. Yeah. But some of them are nonsense. 178 and software were... tools, different. So IFC files from different software tools that were exported. So I, yeah, also 
smaller ones that we've never heard of and didn't know had IFC exports, we now find in a database. And yes, it's just one. And then the question is, if it's just one, should they, yeah, is that enough or, or is it not? I think, didn't you have slides on that or? Uh, no, I think it's part of here. Oh yeah, it's part of here's uh, slides, yeah. So that, yeah, that's, that's what we wanna do after the break. So if it's one file, is that enough? If it's 10 files, is it enough? Is it the last hundred files? Is it the last minimum hundred files in the last three months? Um, it, does it need to be 95%? Does it need to be 99%? Um, those kind of questions is what we wanna discuss after, after the next break, so in the next session. But before we can do that, we need to have um, the blocks assigned. So the, the yeah. example that Ivandro gave, yes, there is schema and yes, there are additional rules and there's different blocks to represent them. But what are they? Is it 20, 20 of those blocks that we are going to do a judgment on? Is it 40? Is it 10? How are we calling them? Should we split out the geometry part into different kinds of geometry? Uh, so those are the, the kind of questions that we want to address. Oh, we will never boy. pass these four slides. Yes. Okay. I understand. <laughs> no, 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 it's I'm fine. Just, it's fine. It's fine. Just, I need to clarify this. I'm just trying to ask the question of if I get it right once as a vendor, doesn't that mean I, no. I passed a, a no. functional so part? The current, the current uh, consensus from most of the vendors, uh, from, from your product owners and people that are in the SAC, say that if you passed it for, according to like, like we the, according to the, the algorithm that we still have to discuss so for example minimum 100 files in the last three months and 99 percent passed then you get like uh, you can send out a press release and you can say we've certified but it's only valid for six months and then after six months you either have to um yeah keep uh, send out a new press release or fix your things can the, the reason for this is because the rules that we have in the validation service will grow. We will find out that quantity sets and geometry are not always aligned, <laughs> that the geometry of a floor is actually twice as large as the quantity in the Q set. So we want to add a rule on that as well, because we see that a lot happening. And all of a sudden, then the files that are being uploaded by someone who got certified is not going to be certified anymore because we're changing the rules. Right. So, but it strikes me that the, the, a good way to think about this is it's a continuous number based on the number of files you have from that vendor. Yes. So if I have one and I've only seen one, but it passed, that's a pass. But if I've seen two and one of them fails, one of them passes, that's bad. But if I, to your point, small vendors, 10 files, 90% is still 90%. Yeah. I mean, if, no, I think again, we, that's one of the questions we have after the break. Does there need to be a minimum? And even if you have a minimum of 10, does there need to be a maximum age of those files? So if we have a small vendor that only has 10 files um, and that are too old, then we're not going to represent any kind of result. We basically say we don't have the significant uh, amount of numbers, so we can't make a judgment call on this. And there are lots with little amount of uploads. All right, so I'm definitely okay with the certification that obviously gets harder over time because otherwise you're stuck, right? Uh, but it does seem as if, you know, I have my version of my product now and it gets certified based on what you have now. Three years from now, you add something and actually now it's no longer certified based on something that didn't exist at the time. And it's never going to be fixed, right? Because we don't support X years back. It seems as if the certification should be, look, you, you passed version 1.0, yeah. right? And maybe you didn't pass version 4.0, right? So you can look and you can say, look, this software passed versions one through three and that's it. That's as much as you can trust. It does seem odd that, you know, you had certified software, you'd make no changes, but then suddenly it's no longer good. Yeah. So it's, I think I, there needs to be some... Yeah, so for, yeah, we never discussed timeline, but I think this is a critical issue. So we, yes, the rule needs to grow. Probably in the first months from now, where they're going to grow by 20 rules each month, which means that we will not start certification next month. 
because we will still be growing to the, let's say, the critical mass. So we need to agree on a certain maturity of rules. And then the growth that we expect is minimal, but still we need to differentiate between the first version of the certification and the second one. But we don't expect to have 100 rules more every month. Otherwise, yes, it becomes a moving target. So we need to agree on a common base, a common maturity, after which we can, com can be confident of saying, okay, from now on, we will be certifying this version of the standard within these parts. Maybe some parts can be not certified at the first, uh, in the first place. Maybe the IFC constraints are too difficult to be certified in the first version, and maybe we will only certify them in, the, uh, in, in four years. So we will say nothing four years after about the previous files because they were right then. So you're totally right, yeah. Uh, just to add to that, uh, there's something that uh, someone else was mentioning in the comments, which is um, you need to consider as well the software version, because uh, maybe um, you fix some things in your software uh, in the latest release, but people keep submitting files to be validated from previous releases where you still have not fixed that. Yeah. So there has to be some sort of like version register for the software as well. To yeah, absolutely. Not only version, also languages. Because among those 178, there were files. There were files coming from tools of the same version, different language. So how do we treat them? Do we group them? Do we not? I mean, are they really different, or is it only a language package difference? So th that's part of the discussion. The algorithm again, it's not an easy one. It's gonna at the end, the algorithm will be probably a series of business logics, uh, fairly complicated, taking into account all these details. Yes, that's why we need you. Yeah, uh, I'm really interested in the uh, uh, geometry part of this because uh, that's really hard. Um, I would suppose that you get a bit of a chicken and egg problem because, uh, I mean, if a piece of geometry, the volume of it has to match the quantity set, then you need to have like an authoritative geometry kernel to tell you the volume of the actual thing that you're checking. So does that mean that we're going to do everything in B-reps? Because that would be nice. Well, I don't know. I, I can't speculate on that. I don't know if that will be the solution, but for sure, the geometry rules are the most difficult one. And for sure, we will need to take into account tolerances. Also because this validation service is based on the open library, the IFC open shell, and like any other uh, library implementing geometry, they have their own way of doing that. So we cannot be that strict on geometry. We will always need to, to provide a judgment with clear statement on the tolerances and... Yeah, but even tolerances don't really cut it usually. Um, if you have issues with Boolean geometry, it usually means you have a very fragmented mesh and now you've, any volume calculations would completely be messed up, including area calculations. Um, so that's, I think it's a, it's a really fascinating topic because it, it would seem to me that if you try to attempt this, you're, you're also attempting to make an authoritative IFC geometry interpreter, which is, I think, a very good thing to do, but also complicated and up to now uh, avoided, let's yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. not stepping in. I mean, we already got comments that we will not do something that can be labeled as a canonical or a reference implementation. Yeah. Okay. Just to give context on that example of QSets and geometry, usually it's right, but when it's wrong, it's really wrong. So it's like a factor 10 wrong. So in that sense, um, yeah, there's multiple geometry engines already available with a certain with a certain range. We can say, well, this is probably a correct value, or or probably not. And so that that's the that's the idea here. Um, and what Evander also said earlier, there's it's not always results of these rule checkings is not always like a red or a green. There's a lot of hey, are you sure about this kind of comments as well? Like a lot of warnings, um, not only in the geometry part, but also in other things. We didn't mention these um, sensible defaults that we want to put in there as well, where we say, okay, this, is a, this decomposition is valid, but um, you're deviating from it. It is, it is valid according to the specification, but we haven't seen this before. So are you sure about this? Um, and again, those are also the, the warnings that we 
that we want to have in the system because it incentivizes users to also learn on how they can uh, improve their IFC exports more and more. Yeah, I think those are all great points. Um, then I have a follow-up question, which is that these are also great points for validating IDS against your IFC, but that's not something we're doing. Uh, so what's the, what's, the, what's the reasoning there to, to differentiate between this being authoritative and oh, that not we being... Are, we are in what we call in Dutch a vereniging. So the, the members of our uh, organization decide where are this organization is going. The members say we need an authoritative IFC checker and the members say we should not touch IDS and IFC checking. Okay. That's a good answer, but I'm sad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always upgrade your membership to have a... <laughs> uh, conscious of time. So check with Dan. We have 10 minutes left before the break. 15 minute break, right? So I'll, I'll try to use... Because I see some traction and I don't want to lose you. And the most interesting part is actually the one I've heard on this algorithm next. So I'm going to just very quickly present you with the challenge that we need to face, especially after seeing these, uh, the ne next part. We need to identify these functional parts. We need to, de to, de to decide how to display uh, results to users. And yes, it's a, an, it's a massive challenge. I initiated it, I gave up three times and then restarted again between the ISO comments. So it was a, the last three months where, yeah, and uh, also the also a, a very powerful artificial intelligence gave up. So it literally gave up, told me, sorry, that's too complicated. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a challenge. But we need to start somewhere. These are the 24, these more or less corresponds to the, can I have that microphone? This is really annoying. Okay, I, we identified 24 boxes, 24 features, IFC features, functional parts, uh, some of which most probably need further decomposition. I have a slide which I'm not going to discuss with you, but going to leave it to you because that's where we need to agree. So for each of these functional parts, um, we provided a name, brief, really brief description, an activation and a validation. So very briefly, the activation is the entity or the bunch of entities that corresponds to the fu this functional part and the validation is what we are checking. SNS stands for syntax and schema. You will see that for some functional parts, we only check syntax and schema related to that. For some other functional parts, we check syntax and schema always, plus a couple of implementers agreement, a couple of other rules that sits on top of the schema, okay? Of course, those are documented in the uh, IFC HTML. So uh, you have a slide for each one of these. We're not gonna go through. I just wanna give you an idea of the 24 that we have and another attempt after the first fourth or fifth time failing of breaking down geometry further, okay? So which type of geometry do we have an IFC, axis geometry, alignment geometry, pun base, tessellated, BREP, C, CSG, transformations. Uh, bounding box probably deserves a, its own container. I don't know. That's, that's totally up to you. I mean, to us. We need to agree on these boxes. We need to find a way to display these features to users. Okay, so where, where does bounding box sits here? Nowhere. Probably deserves a 10th. 10th box. Uh, same goes for, and yeah, for each one of these, we have a description, a bunch of entities that determines that these, uh, that the software, the file contains these or tr is trying to achieve B reps. Same for object placement, probably we'll need to further divide between local placement, grid placement, linear placement, because not every vendor supports everything and it's a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's wrong, fundamentally wrong to say something is red on placement without going a little bit further. Um, and for positioning elements, uh, again, positioning elements, supports of posi positioning elements is, is again too vague. We might uh, drill down to grid alignment and reference. So that's the idea. 
I'm going to share this presentation because uh, I'm sure that some of you will be pleased to read through every functional part, the description, the activation, and the rules that we have. Uh, but uh, I, I don't want to lose you, so I suggest we have this break, and then we we get back in 15 minutes, and we start right away with the examples of HERD, um, firing up the validation service, and showing you how the, the current files that we collected so far performs within these functional parts. Is that okay? Take it as a yes, enjoy your break. Sorry, so guys, uh, just a couple of comments. So we have, uh, we have uh, just like last time, some t-shirts for you that you survived the technical meeting. Dan is now sorting them on size. If you forgot which size you have, he probably still has the list, uh, but also more important. So we're going to discuss these algorithms and functional parts after break. We're also going to show the current data in the database. Uh, and uh, then we're going to tweak the numbers on when uh, blocks turn red and green. This is very sensitive information. Uh, so we're gonna cut the feed and uh, shut, out, uh, shut off the camera. So for those online who are still listening, this for you, this is the end of the day. Uh, we won't be coming back online anymore. Um, so we'll be back online tomorrow morning at nine. For those in the room, please be, be nice and don't record this on your own phone either. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 